Hello and welcome back to the course Helicopter Flying. Today we'll do something challenging and uh, that's hovering. Hovering seems very very hard at first. Well at least I felt it's uh, really hard and um, I think most helicopter students felt that way. The problem here is that the helicopter itself is not stable. So in a well-trimmed airplane, if you let go of the controls, it will just approximately continue its flight path for a while. If you let go of the controls in a helicopter, then uh, you'll be in trouble within a few seconds or even quicker. So you constantly have to work in a hover. Well, the faster you go, so in forward flight, helicopter flying gets easier because the vertical and horizontal stabilizers on the tail stabilize the aircraft. This is also why it's advisable to have some uh, headwind if you're hovering. So always to hover into the wind if possible, because then this headwind is equivalent to some uh, forward airspeed. And it will also stabilize the helicopter. So using the collective in a hover is pretty straightforward. It's a position control, so to speak, so pull it up to go up, put it down to descend. The cyclic, however, is really tricky in the hover because you will need to move it almost constantly but with just very, very small movements. If you move the cyclic, you're actually kind of starting an acceleration. So it doesn't work like that, that if you want to move one inch to the right, you move the cyclic one inch to the right. But instead, if you're moving the cyclic to the right, you will slowly start to accelerate to the right. And then it's pretty challenging to judge when to apply left cyclic and then neutral the cyclic again to stop that motion. So this is all about practice, of course. It often helps to pick a reference spot in the distance, so not look too closely down uh, to an area very close to the helicopter, but rather look into the distance. And then finally, you have the paddles. Well, if there is no wind, there is not much work to be done on the paddles. But if it's windy, then you'll really work the paddles all the time. And you really have to do it actively and uh, constantly. Don't let any big yaw develop, because then you might end up in uh, loss of tail rotor effectiveness. Okay, so I lift off now and go to a square, a portion of uh, the apron that's, uh, well, like a square. If you have a real, a real helicopter square on the airfield, that's even better. And there you can do some uh, nice hovering exercises. So, first of all, let's just lift off. Pulling up collective really slowly, do a proper two-step procedure, so first get the aircraft into equilibrium and then lift it off as vertical as possible. Well then we can try right here to uh, stay into in a hover. So you constantly have to work the cyclic if you notice any tendency of the helicopter to move, just counteract it immediately with very small inputs. Especially um, in a helicopter with this, with such a rotor system, semi-rigid two-blade teetering system, it's even harder because the rotor disc reacts pretty quickly to your cyclic inputs, but the fuselage doesn't. 
so there's a tendency normally to over control. So just use very little control movements, very small control movements. Okay, let's uh, go to another part of the apron to do our exercises. your hovers and the hover taxiing um, roughly in five to eight feet above ground. It's a bit hard to touch in the simulator. Hovering too high is bad in uh, case of an engine failure, but hovering uh, too low is dangerous because uh, of the risk of dynamic rollover. That's why my opinion is to rather be a bit on the high side uh, rather than on the, le on the uh, low side because um, Statistically, you have a higher chance of dynamic rollover than or an engine failure. But as I said, try to keep it uh, between 5 and 8 feet. Then find some square on the airfield. I don't have one here, so I'm using this part of the apron that's, well, at least looking a bit like a square, even if it really isn't. I'm just uh, looking for something that's got... Uh, four corners. So I'm using this first corner here as my starting point. And then there are various exercises you can do. One of them is just to hover briefly over the corner and then proceed to the next corner and lo along the edge of the square. Then in that next corner Hover briefly again and then turn left to follow the next edge. You can also do this while keeping your heading constant, so not turning to follow the shape, but you keep your heading constant and uh, just simply hover left, backwards and then right. And there's even another version of this exercise where in each corner you actually touch down, so you do a landing. And then, for a bigger challenge, just add some wind. Okay. So uh, find yourself some nice place to practice hovering. As I've said, it's uh, pretty difficult at first, but uh, trust me, after a few times, it may take some hours of uh, practice, you will eventually master it, and it will be very satisfying to be actually able to uh, safely and precisely hover a helicopter. So have fun trying this, and uh, see you in the next lesson.